Here I am with Kirk McCaleb, musician from Sacramento who's doing a documentary because he's a filmmaker too. Kirk, thanks for joining me here. You're welcome. Thank you, Alex. We just did a, a, a really cool interview Two for, hours for your right project. Yes, yeah. yes. And just real briefly, can you sum up what this project is about, about local music? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as Alex mentioned, I'm a musician, but more specifically, I was a musician during a particular period of time here in Sacramento, Davis, and the Bay Area, and that was the 1980s. And uh, it was a really important time for myself and many other people that I know, um, but nobody's ever done a documentary about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why is that? And uh, so I thought about it for a couple years, and I started a video production business about seven years ago, and that kind of took off. Um, but it kept on nagging in the back of my head that, you know, what about this 80s music thing that you, well, I just don't have time for it. And, well, now I have time for it, or I sort of have time for it. But more specifically, it just seems like now is the time to do it. Um, nostalgia has really come back. Um, Especially social media has helped uh, elevate nostalgia. Absolutely. And, and something just told me I needed to do it. And part of it was because um, a good friend of mine, uh, James Swaggart, who is a, a film director in LA, um, just came out with a movie about the N-Men, which is a skating group that was started here in Sacramento. And they mm. were notorious for doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Like but, skateboard stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, they would drain pools, <laughs> right? They'd go to houses that were like, either people were on vacation, and they'd drain their pool, and they'd skate it, and they'd split. <laughs> or they would say, we're here to fix your pool, uh, you know, and uh, they'd drain it, they'd skate, and they'd split. Um, but then they also did some really cool stuff, like they were one of the people that were involved in getting the X Games up and running. Hmm. So anyway, uh, James uh, did a, uh, um, uh, a documentary on them, and it's now out on streaming platforms on uh, like um, Amazon and, and uh, Netflix and all those different platforms. And it's done very well. And uh, when I mentioned to him, I said, yeah, I'm thinking about doing a, a, a documentary on the 80s uh, music scene in Sacramento, Davis and the Bear, and he goes, oh, you got to do it. And I said, yeah, I'm thinking about it, just there's a lot of work. He said, no, 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 you got to do it. He says, I'll help you. I was like, oh, okay. Who, el who else will? Right? <laughs> so anyway, that's that's how it started, and now I'm in the process of doing interviews with musicians, uh, club owners, fans, anybody mm -hmm. who had anything to do with the 80s music scene in Sacramento. I'm looking for people to reach out and, and uh, con contact me so that we can do mm -hmm. interviews and get photos and all that good stuff. So yeah. You're a musician. You were the drummer of Rhythm School? For, a, for Rhythm School for a while. I was the uh, drummer for The Veil, vale, uh, both bands from the 80s, yes. X-Men, X-Men. And now we look at 2024. Uh, a lot of people from the local scene, even 80s, are still around. Oh, yeah. So um, doesn't that open the door for, say, like... Um, adults past their rock and roll prime to, to keep on going the, oh yeah um matter of fact me personally i went back into uh in my i stopped about 10 years ago but for about a decade i played with a um a band that would play clubs and casinos and state fair mm -hmm. and and all that kind of stuff because i still had the music in me mm -hmm. um, but when it got to a certain point i decided i i, I had no business being out at three o'clock in the morning anymore <laughs> uh, i'm getting older i've got grandkids yeah. what am i doing uh yeah. and you know what you, you when you uh when you're you actually pay to play in, the, in sometimes yeah um and uh, i was just tired of moving my drum set and, and equipment around and but I had a lot of fun with it for a while, but yeah, there's still a lot of people that are out there playing, still out there gigging, and we should until we can't play anymore because mm -hmm. music, if it's in you, it's you're just going to mm -hmm. continue with it forever. So, yeah. You know, you just interviewed me about uh, all these local bands and a bunch, a, a bunch of others that I forgot to mention yeah. just popped into my head, like Eric Martin. Um, I mean, he was in Mr. Big, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. had a big number yeah, one hit. Of course. Okay, and uh, the Mother Hips. The Mother Hips. Uh, well known in the Chico area and yeah, Sacramento. Yeah. Chico also yeah. had a very big 80s scene. It just wasn't okay. quite as well known, but yeah. Well, Chico State had yeah, a lot. Of course. Lot. <laughs> okay. Big party town. Yeah. And, um, well, I, I mentioned Kevin Sharp was a country singer uh, back in the uh, 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on, but... Um, We'll, we'll talk about that more in your doc, documentary, yeah. but I'm just curious, um, out of all 
all the local stuff out of Sacramento, like who stands out is really memorable in your mind? Well, you know, in my mind, particularly, it would be the features. And the reason, one of the reasons is because I'm such, Johnny Pride. such good friends with Johnny Pride. And he's watching this way past your bedtime. Get to bed, old man. Um, no, he's actually helping me with this project. He's, I've kind of named him my uh, executive producer because he is actually helping me out quite a bit. And we are going to be putting out a blast through social media, uh, a, a very well put together um, call to participate. Um, mm -hmm. So that should be looking for that, because cool. um, we really do want a, a wide variety of people to be involved. So, sure. um, but anyway, yeah, the features: uh, Steel Breeze, Bourgeois Tag, the Convertibles, uh, Rhythm School. What um, were the convertibles? Were they kind of punk or something? No, the convertibles were uh, they were uh, more pop pop rock. Hmm. Um, but yeah, like Steel Breeze. Yeah, yeah. but uh, a little bit more guitar oriented. They did have keyboards and everything, hmm. much more guitar oriented. The the drummer for that, Joe Lamond, ended up becoming the executor, or he was an executive um, with the NAM show. So he's he was like one of the major people with with mm, the NAM. That's show. major. Yeah. So he just recently retired Mu from musical that, instrument type exposition. Oh yeah. yeah, the biggest one in the country. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, a lot of these people um, who came from Sacramento, though maybe their bands didn't quite you know make it as big as we wanted them to. A lot of people have gone on to do bigger things. Right. And, and Musicians great. have come through. Um, uh, the Bo Brummels, you yeah. know, had Sal Valentino. Yeah. Forgot to mention him, but he was from the 60s, and now he's still playing around in Sacramento, I think. Yeah, yeah. And another one, I don't know, have you heard of Papa's Culture? No, it's not Okay, one heard of. they were signed to Island Records in the early 90s. Okay. And um, they're... Um, one of their main guys, Harley White Jr., has his orchestra now, a jazz orchestra. Okay. So he's pretty well known in town. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. see, this guy knows his stuff. Yeah. Did you ever hear of Tiger Trap? I have heard of Tiger Trap. Yeah, yeah they were signed to someone for a while. Um, there were a bunch of other signings, but I, I don't think just because a band gets signed means anything until they put out the record and, and make it happen. Right, you know? right. Because uh, being signed is just a very first part of, yeah. of the of the thing that's you know okay you made it this far now what is it going to do you know and where it goes from there so yeah and a couple mentions uh, on local music kzap used to put out their hometown album they, they put out at least two of them yep and steel breeze was on one of those yep. you don't yep. want me anymore in that's fact right. an earlier version of it yeah 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 and then uh, k108 also had a hometown oh, did album. They really? i don't know what they called it but they they put out at least one album a compilation of local music Very back cool. in the probably early '80s. Very cool. Yeah, the Veil actually. We we had a uh, we we missed the deadline is what happened. Mm. We had actually uh, Scott Miller from Game Theory produced mm. our album, but prior to that he were, uh, produced our EP, and uh, we were like uh, three hours away from the deadline. We were supposed to have the tape to KZAP, and it was like they mm. shut the doors, locked the vault, <laughs> locked the door. <laughs> Don't let these yeah. guys in, so we didn't get on the album. But what was cool about getting on that album uh, was that KZAP actually played those tracks. Yes, right? yes, yeah. they did, yeah. I wish we had more things like that, you yeah. know, where we could highlight, because there's still, I mean, um, there's a lot of music. And just because we're not the L.A. or the, the San Francisco scene, mm -hmm. uh, there's still a lot of good musicians in this area. Oh, yeah. Uh, in fact, a lot of signed acts and big name acts have moved to Sacramento kind of incognito just because it's a cool hideaway yeah, market. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Downtown is still yeah. downtown. Yeah. yeah. Still a cool place to be. So, um, well, great talking with you, Kirk. Uh, with we'll you be guys. working in the future together yep. on, on this kind of stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. All right. Rock on, Sacramento. <laughs>